there were Germans in the pizza bar express or whatever it was. Germans? God, Arthur, how awful. He said, yes, it was, Daddy. But there was some good news, too. I said, what was that, Arthur? One of them was disabled. <laughs> I was a cracker. I thought, that's my boy. <laughs> like this need children they bring it alive they make it fun and they enjoy it well I'll tell you what they are the bunch of puff if all your children end up as queers that's the end of a family isn't it <laughs> I mean you've got to breed <laughs> no I got nothing against queers but that doesn't mean to say you want them in your family you don't want to breed them because you won't breed from them like breeding a mule Hilda! Don't kill him. So boring. No fighting over. Stop it! Tilda! Why are you doing it? Oh god. Tilda! No! He's dead, right? No, that's enough. Enough! Enough! Enough. Right. Why are you attacking him? Oh, I see it's far enough. Above the fireplace was a picture of a battle and my ancestor, Sir John Fulford, commanded a squadron of ships and the end result was 5,000 dead Frenchmen, which was a satisfactory result all round. She's going off, she's going off to London so, for a couple of days, see a few people. That means me and the dogs could relax a bit. I can't remember what you're doing in London, but that's really immaterial. What do girls do in London anywhere? Go to the hairdresser or spend money and see old friends and have lunch and drink too many bottles of white wine, I suspect. Bye, Coffee. Bye. Have fun. <laughs> Four would do that. Do we wear the four? Basically, we're on holiday, aren't we? When the cat's away, the mice shall go on holiday. Stop it! It's always wise to keep out of range. When mud bathing commences. Well, you could see the fun, did yeah. you fancy? A dip. Granny's pay is 200 quid on some expensive toy. And it comes in a big box and it gets out of a big box. And then the children end up playing in the big box and don't play with a 250 quid toy. You know, have simple fun. This is simple fun, isn't it? We all really like throwing mud at each other. Mud is good for the skin. You know, there's a potential there. A potential for a spa. Fat Americans. <laughs> fat Germans, yeah. Germans are fat and so are Americans. The reason is because there were a lot of Germans went to America. You know, there's obviously a fat German gene in there bursting to come out. And it does. <laughs> And <laughs> 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 you're so light, you go over like. Don't like, uh, stick your bloody knees in my face. Oh, Humphrey, do stop being a bore. Oh, yeah, you're being a fucking nuisance. Oh, fuck off. Oh, no. oh, don't whine. Now my six pounds now. Shut up, I always hear one word about money ever again. Don't try, Mr. Hyde! This is stuff only for the full for children! Let me have one on the back of one. They did not try this bug at home, okay? Oh, we always do that on telly, don't we? <laughs> I think all parents are you know, it's a slight element of being a control freak. Uh, I'm wanting to know where your children are at all times because you don't trust them and you think uh, that if, you know, they'll be up on the battlements and falling down and splat strawberry jam all over the bloody drive or drowned in the lake or whatever. 
But, you know, it's a, it's a problem in a big place like this. Where's Matilda and Edmund now? You know, do I care? I'm probably watching television. But, I mean, they might be doing any number of... Or my trampoline. I don't know. I'm going to rush around and find out. In her case, I got it right, but I might have got it wrong. What's that, what's, how's that nursery rhyme go? When she's bad, she's very bad and bloody awful. And you drown her quite happily in the lake. With a great stone round her neck. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, what? Well, you're looking at me in a quizzical way. I'm not, I'm looking at the dogs. Oh, I'm thinking how delightful and wet and smelly they were. The sort of wife who wants to keep dogs out of the house or something, you know, it's not worth it. You know she's the sort of woman who would make your life absolute misery. Oh, look, there's some dirt in the house. Oh, dear, how awful. You know, fuck that for a laugh. Get your nose out of the dishwasher! Freud said, men think about sex every five minutes. I always say, well, landowners think about money every five minutes. Don't be a bore. Don't be a bore, please. In fact, all of them are rich. A lot of them are poor. Show them around and you never know your luck. And if I... They might feel so sorry that they get the checkbook out. I have to say, we never have. Been rather a disappointment. But I think one has to persevere. I remember once the doorbell rang at about seven o'clock at night. I opened it from this guy who reckoned he was and said he lived on Fifth Avenue, and I got awfully excited. But Kashanda thought he had AIDS. I wasn't nearly so excited as I was. I said, that's an extra reason to be excited. He means going to die soon. So if you. <laughs> <laughs> so if only he reunited him and he might remember it in his will. Well, I think he probably is dead now and he certainly didn't remember it in his will, so that was a bit of a waste of time. And Kachanda threw away the glass which he'd been drinking out of and every plate he had touched in case we contacted AIDS. And I have to say, a bigger bunch of wankers I've never met. <laughs> I never really envisaged ever asking for a grant from a taxpayer to help maintain this house. Houses like this. As a private owner, I make all the decisions. If I want to paint the whole bloody thing bright orange with yellow, I can. You know, we've all learnt our lesson, which is basically that, on the whole, the people who are part of English heritage and the like are a load of wankers. People think it's part of English heritage, when all the people have tried to do is either tax it into the ground or, back in the Civil War, try to batter it into the ground with bloody cannon. I know, Solitaire. Well, that means it fucking ain't their heritage, it's my heritage. The only way to keep an estate like this together is not to take your eye off the ball, to be careful, not to gamble. Um, and that's why we've held our land and our house for 800 years. Not that is, but we haven't had the odd complete credit. But luckily, we haven't had two in a row. I mean, the old rule of thumb is a family and a state can survive one idiot, but can't survive two. Being a landowner, one spends an enormous amount of one's waking hours planning one's own death. It's rather a sort of morbid factor of land ownership that you want to die when it's the most tax-efficient time to die. When Francis does die, his daughter and his two youngest sons will have to find another house to wreck. The whole of the great Fulford estate will go to his eldest son, Arthur. I've never made any secret, no, no, there's no secret between my children that Arthur will inherit this and virtually the whole place. That's called primogentia, all goes to the eldest boy. I received it because I was the only boy, and my elder sister's got nothing very much. And my father received it, although he had two brothers, and so on and so on, right back into the dim and distant memory of time. And the only reason why this place exists in this current form is because 
primogenitia was always rigidly adhered to. In other words, for me to suddenly break the rule and say it's unfair is a load of bollocks. It's not unfair, it's totally fair, because I give as I receive, and it would be totally unfair to my ancestors for me to break that pledge. So it goes to Arthur. Paul! Nobody groomed me for the job, or if my father was grooming me, I didn't really realise it was happening, and I rather think that's the best way to groom anybody for a job is not to go and make a great song and dance about it in training. You've got to show by example an aptitude. OK, Arthur. Ah, oh, I can't hit these bloody things. You're so rubbish. I know. Completely shit. You need to love a place like this. You've got to love the landscape, love the house, and you've got to feel for it. If you do that, I think he does. Well, I don't think any problem. You're so rubbish. It's not a bad neck, actually. Wow. Look at it. What about these guns? Break that fucking slate. You're in for a thousand pound bill. My philosophy is really based on a perpetual feeling of optimism in that eventually something always comes right. And that you must not rush things because effectively, if you, you're trying to beat fate, and fate always comes right in the long run. You know, if you don't rush things, suddenly the money is there. Everybody always says one's doomed. At least ever since I've been bloody born, I've been doomed, according to the fucking experts. Can't seem a burden, a place like this. You know, when the bills come in and brown envelopes of the morning and there's not a lot of money to pay for things and you want to do things and you can't do things because you have to restrict what you do to work within the limits of the budget. We always travel optimistically. We'll always hope we'll arrive on a sandy shore one day instead of on a rocky beach. And, you know, by the time something really needs to be spent, a lot of money needs to be spent, hopefully we'll be on a sandy shore. We are the ultimate long-term investors. No people invest for the long-term like landowners do. Nobody else does. But you have to give something back for future generations. You know, I can look out and I can see that cedar over there. Ah, marvellous Lebanon cedar in the middle of the park. And I know that, I look at that and I think, of oh, Colonel Baldwin Fulford who planted that around 1800. Or... John Fulford, who actually ended up in serious death and trouble in 1760, he did leave me the late. Although much land had to be sold to pay his debts, you know, he has left us a legacy which I always thank him for. My father planted these trees in 1948, and he planted them for me. He had a feeling then, he had an idea that this was the way forward. But trees, if he planted them, would in 50, 60 years be a real asset for his still-to-be-born son. The really brilliant thing is that I can cut a tree and I can replant it. I can take the money and pay the debt or put the roof back on, but I haven't sold an asset like land or house, which I can never get back again. So you plant for Arthur, you plant for Arthur's son and his son's son. I'm drinking out of wine which were laid down by my father, my grandfather and my great-great-great-grandfather. And Arthur will hopefully get a drink out of some of the things which I planted. OK, quick. Oh! Humphrey, no. Right, now get back with a sodding camera because you've got one thirty seconds to take the fucking film. Stay. Hurry up, just join the picture. Come on, hurry up, get back, take the photograph. Edmund, sit still. Come on, we've got to get a move on. We haven't got time to play. Don't really get to the At the end of the day, the aim is to hand over what one received in a better state when one got it. In this house is a trust, and it's a trust I hold to give as I receive. So it goes to Arthur. I have no fear that he won't be an extremely good steward of his property. A house like this is really a young man's house. It needs young energy. 
As you get older, your eyes dim and you don't see the blemishes, you don't see the water coming in. Hopefully, there are a few more years left of my era, and hopefully we can see that we are going up the mountain rather than coming down it. If you believe in an afterlife or a life after death, which I think I rather do, in fact, I bloody well do, death is the biggest adventure, isn't it? The greatest adventure of your life is to die. If one really thinks of going up a big ladder and uh, meeting your one's father, mother, and ancestors, grandparents, and way back, I don't want to be the guy who screwed up or the guy who I'd say, oh, sorry, it's all gone. You know, there's, there's Mr. Smith of Goldman Sachs living there now, or some other ghastly character, you know. I don't want to be the guy, no. Yeah, it'd be a bit more worrying dying if I thought I'd have to tell Dad and the rest of the crew that little message.